Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug cutiapine, also known as Seroquel. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Cutiapine belongs to the atypical antipsychotic drug classification. Atypical antipsychotics are also known as second generation antipsychotics or non-conventional antipsychotics. Before we talk about cutiapine specifically, we'll cover a bit of information about the two main antipsychotic drug classes. Antipsychotics can either be typical or atypical. Typical antipsychotics are sometimes referred to as first generation or conventional antipsychotics and are used in the treatment of psychosis and behavioral problems. They are the older drugs which can be highly effective but generally have a high risk of causing side effects, especially extrapyramidal symptoms or EPS. We'll talk more about EPS later on. Typical antipsychotics are generally used to treat positive symptoms of schizophrenia and other behavioral problems. Positive symptoms are thoughts, feelings, or actions that are added on to a person's regular behaviors. Delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized speech are examples of positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Atypical antipsychotics, like cutiapine, are the newer and generally safer options that have a lower risk of causing EPS. Atypical antipsychotics are also used to treat psychosis and behavioral problems. However, atypical antipsychotics can treat both positive and negative symptoms. Negative symptoms are things that are taken away from regular behaviors, such as having a flat affect, reduced speech, lack of initiative, apathy, and more. The symptoms of schizophrenia and other mood disorders are thought to be caused by overactivity of different neurotransmitters in the brain, mainly dopamine and serotonin. So more dopamine and more serotonin means more symptoms. It is thought that cutiapine works by inhibiting dopamine and serotonin receptors, thereby reducing the symptoms of schizophrenia and other behavioral problems. But keep in mind that schizophrenia and cutiapine are still not completely understood. Cutiapine is used in the management of various mood disorders, including schizophrenia, acute mania or depressive episodes in bipolar disorder, and may be used in combination with antidepressants in the treatment of depression. Remember that as an atypical antipsychotic, cutiapine can treat both positive and negative symptoms. Some of the off-label uses of cutiapine include obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, generalized anxiety disorder, and more. Cutiapine can cause what we mentioned earlier as extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS. EPS are drug-induced movement disorders, including tardive dyskinesia, which is a slow onset of involuntary movements like sticking out the tongue or smacking of the lips, Parkinsonisms, which are the symptoms found in Parkinson's disease, like tremors and rigidity, and other dystonias. Cutiapine may also cause a life-threatening reaction called Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome, or NMS. NMS presents as high fever, confusion, tachycardia, muscle rigidity, and can lead to further complications like rhabdomyolysis, kidney failure, and seizures. There are so many potential side effects of cutiapine, so I'll just quickly add some of the other important ones here. Suicidal ideations, weight gain, hypotension, which may present as dizziness and headache, increased risk for falls, especially in elderly patients, hypothyroidism, and more. It is most important to be aware of the black box warnings of cutiapine. The first is that cutiapine may be associated with increased mortality in older adults with dementia-related psychosis. Cutiapine may increase the risk of cerebrovascular adverse events, such as strokes or TIAs in geriatric patients. Another black box warning is that cutiapine should not be used in children less than 10 years old, as its safety in children has not yet been established. Avoid use in patients with Parkinson's disease. The symptoms of Parkinson's are caused by the loss of dopamine, and remember cutiapine inhibits dopamine receptors. Therefore, cutiapine may increase the symptoms of Parkinson's. Cutiapine may also cause QT prolongation, which can be seen on an ECG. So precaution should be used if a patient already has QT prolongation. Caution should also be exercised in patients with severe CNS depression, uncontrolled seizure disorders, suicidal ideations, hypothyroidism, and more. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of cutiapine. Especially watch for the signs and symptoms of EPS, NMS, and suicidal ideations.
Ensure proper fall prevention is in place when starting cutiapine, especially for elderly patients. Elderly patients may also require lower doses of cutiapine, especially in those with decreased renal and hepatic function. Avoid abrupt discontinuation of cutiapine. Gradually taper the dose instead. Be aware of the potential interactions with cutiapine, just some of which include other CNS depressants, like alcohol, which may increase CNS depression, dopaminergic agonists, which decrease cutiapine's effectiveness, and many more. There's always so much to cover with antipsychotics, but I hope this helped give a good general understanding of cutiapine. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.